Hello everyone, this is uh, Water Tips. Uh, welcome to the uh, next video. We just got done with the last video, which was the uh, Hive mission. Now we're going to go ahead and continue. What we're going to do is, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, what I like to do is tour the watchtower. So you're going to go to your journal, select it. Go where it says, Welcome to the watchtower, select it. Oracle here. Great news. All your good work has made a difference. You are invited to the watchtower. The Justice League officially invites you up to our satellite HQ. Get to the nearest teleporter, and I'll show you around. So we're actually in Little Bohemia Base by the mailboxes. You're going to take these stairs up here to the portal, teleport hub. Once you get in the middle, you can see circle button, push circle. It's going to bring up a smaller menu, teleport your watch to our meta wing. What you're going to do, um, it's probably going to be various stations if you have a different mentor, but for this one, I have Superman mentor, so it's going to be the meta wing. We're going to select that. And here is the entrance to the meta wing. Just want to go straight ahead, basically where your uh, map says. Arrow goes. Once you hit the orange part of the map from your little thing, you'll see. This is it, the Watchtower. We've retrofitted it a bit for all you new heroes. The Green Lantern, John Stewart, drew up the plans. He's an architect. Just follow your mini map and activate the consoles. I'll tell you about the place. Basically, we're just going to activate these consoles. Each time I activate one, I'm just going to listen to what it says. Go from there. I'll explain certain things as needed. If you're working with Superman, then the Meta Wing was designed for you. You'll be spending a lot of time here with other Meta heroes like Flash and Power Girl. Check out the Vendor's console for specialized Meta Human Strength equipment. With your superpowers, <coughs> you'll need gear that can take as much punishment as you do. Next, we're going to head to the uh, Vendor Information Console, located in the General Information Console. Just follow like said, the arrow in your little map in the corner. There's the next terminal. The Justice League Watchtower was specially designed to help heroes meet and get the equipment they need. But it's an unwritten JLA rule that you must gain renown with factions before you can obtain their exclusive gear. Our goal is to create solidarity with the entire hero cause. Next we're going to locate the Meta Wing Bank, Broker, and Mailboxes. You're already familiar with the mailboxes as opposed to the last videos I showed you. So let's go over here. Each wing in the Watchtower has its own bank. Wayne Enterprises, Queen Industries, and others all contribute to a fund that rewards heroic activity and provides this secure storage for your gear. Yeah, like Oracle said, let's have the bank over here where you access the bank. You can put stuff in here. As you can see, the inventory is very big. I believe, depending on your membership, if you're, whether you're free, premium, you have a little very much smaller access to certain things. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put the XP booster box in there, Exobit, and this Mega Capsule. I'll leave the potion in my mouth. Then you push circle to get back out of it. That's all there is to it, really. The brokers where you go and sell things, find things, like for instance, here's the categories. You go up top with this little box and, and type in what you want to see. You can add an item, sell items, there's gear, all those kinds of things. We'll get into that at a later time. I just want to show you what the screen looks like. And then of course, last but not least, is the mailboxes. This is something that we showed you many times in the videos before. The watchtower just has various terminals with mailboxes all over the all over the whole watchtower. This is the meta wing. The other two, like the tech wing and the magic wing, all have the same things. It's just located, which you will see pretty soon here. Let's continue with the tour. You can kind of fly up here in this little middle area. To continue this way to the metal wing deck. Just follow the arrows around. We're next we're going to access the console and the central hub. Which I'm actually follow this way here. It's a pretty big watchtower, but like I said, if you follow the mini map, mini map up in your right hand corner, you should have no problem locating the console with the arrow. As you can see when you're by, here's the access console to the central hub. Welcome to the Watchtower's central hub. You can get to just about anywhere in the Watchtower from here. All three wings, the mailboxes, the monitor room, and the war room. The Watchtower itself is visible from Earth and maintains multiple security measures to keep the society and villains at bay. Okay. 
Next room next is the console in the large room, which is the next room here. A lot of people just access the terminal over here to my left, but what I'm going to do first is talk to the Huntress because she has a small little thing you got to do that kind of is a little hint to investigations. I think it's a good thing to access her, so you want to talk to her, Mr. Zirkle? If you really want to fight crime, you'll need to do some detective work. Clues open up investigations, collections, and briefings to aid the good fight. Oracle's even rigged your interface to show colored markers when valuable information is near. Find one here in the watchtower, then come back to me. So she, what she does is she uses a little mission called investigation, and all you're doing is going to find an investigation clue, like the ones that I actually did in the previous videos that you saw them, they're green and blue. This one we're going to be looking for is going to be in the watchtower, which is green. This is what I do, I go straight up here like this, follow us around this here though. Here's the, first, here's the one that I get. It's pretty close to where she's at. Oracle here. That hollow token represents the hub, the core of the watchtower, the seat of heroic action for Earth. Once you're done with it, turn back around to where you press where The best way is to look at this big Earth like hologram, and then it's lower level. You fall back over to her, look for the question mark, talk to her. Yep, that'd be a clue. See how many you can bring in, and I'll let the question know you're on the case. She's not much of one for crowds, so just check your email. Happy hunting. Go back to your menu, your journal, you'll see where the question mark is investigation hunt. To complete it, push X. You'll get a little bit of experience for it, that's the reason why I wanted to do it. Then you'll go back to your journal and access Welcome to Watchtower. Sorry, X, just to make sure that you have it and continue on with the tour. Next, we're going to go to this other monitor room, little access terminal right here. Welcome to the heart of the Watchtower. This is where the Martian Manhunter determines our global alerts from data in the Monitor Womb. The Huntress is also on hand, with investigations from the Question. Across the way is the Hall of Heroes, where Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman coordinate the League. Only official Justice League members can enter the Hall. Okay, after that it says, as you can see, locate Watchtower War Room. Always look at the bottom right hand corner just below where your catty corner from where your minimap is. That always tells you what to do next. Follow the yellow arrow around throughout here. Now this is going to be a little not tricky, but some people think you go through that door up there. It's actually underneath, like this. You can see like the orange kind of colored room. Follow the corridor down. Follow left around the corner. There's two ways to get to this one. There's on the other side too, but this is the easiest way. Then you just access console in the war room. You just want to go over here. Use the console. This is the Watchtower War Room, our state-of-the-art training area. Talk to Beast Boy for access to the simulator where you can practice <coughs> other hero and villain moves. Ambush Bug takes care of our vault drops. Okay, the next thing is to locate the reactor core. What we're going to do is take a quick run down here so you can take a look at what the, what the actual war room looks like. Basically, it's just like there in the other room. There's a kiosk where you can buy gear. Other things, various gears, ambush bug is down here. What I want to show you is these little fighting things. They're like little uh, sparring targets. You can use them to practice at your leisure. They're going to be really useful later on when you want to get up your stats and see how strong you got. Anyway, that's all that really is. Uh, each, like I said, you can access it anytime you want to. Go into Watchtower. Anyway, that's all there is to it. Let's go back up and continue with the tour. Let's go ahead and locate the reactor core. Just going to continue to fall back up the staircase of this corridors, like so. If you want to, you can speed flight since you now have that ability. Then you want to go back to where we were. See the exit, the metal wing. Just want to go back and above second floor. Go up here. Follow the metal wing through the arrows. Always look at your mini map. It tells you where to go. So we'll actually get lost with it or not because it's the first time through here. Go back to the metal wing. Locate the reactor core. So this is the room if you look familiar, we were starting out here. All you're going to do is go down to the second level, or I should say lower level. Look for the room that says reactor core. It's to the right of the R&D station area. So I'm going to go in here. Take this little ramp downwards. And straight ahead you'll see the next terminal you have to access. You're now at the Watchtower Reactor Core. Star Labs and Firestorm rigged it to power the entire Watchtower. If you're looking to immediately take out some villains, you'll find Hawkman and Cyborg here with the latest intel. 
Okay, so then once you're done with that, you locate the equilateral area. Also, just so you know, there's a few terminals in here that one you can access, like talk to Hawkman, Cyborg. This is the terminal you want if you want to get more PvP Legends characters. I believe I mentioned it a couple videos ago. Just access it, and there's some you can purchase. Of course, they do require um, Marks of Legends, which you'll get later on if you get more PvP and arena matches. Anyway, let's continue on with the tour. Let's locate the Equal Cultural Area. So you can head back out here instead of making, you're going to make a quick left. If you want, you can speed that way faster. I'm going to go through these doors. As you can see, Equilatra is kind of like a green area, like forest type of terrain. It's kind of neat. Then you go over here to this terminal and access it. Always nice to pass through the aquacultural area. A little green spot in the midst of this gigantic satellite. This is where we keep Star Labs recalibrating attributes devices, or RADs. Want to refocus your skills to refine your edge? Take a look. And yeah, just to better explain, in case you don't understand what Oracle was saying, these little things over here are respec stations. Like if you want to respect your loadout, like you see one you have below, if you're not happy with it, you can go in here, cost a little bit of money, access the terminals, and you pay like 500 or some money, and you can respect all your powers and redo it again for a small amount of money. It's going to be very useful in the future if you really want to do your loadout for useful missions later on, or if you don't like the missions or loadout you have, you can rechange it. Then passing through over here, we have the hairstylist, uh, Tammy. You can talk to her and get to various different hairstyles and whatnot. Here's some vending unit 22. You'll see these all over the watchtower. They're for different reasons. Once you get higher or lower, you have access to them to get different gear that require certain marks. They become more available once you're higher in CR, which I'll explain more to you later on. Moving on, we're going to go to the watch the watchtower um, hangar, which I believe is located in the tech wing. Just want to follow this corridor out the other side of the aquatic hall area. Here's a tech wing. I believe if you go to your right real quick, you'll find another green investigation. It's right over here. Go ahead and get that one. token shows the emblem of the tech wing. Tech users use advanced technology and gadgets as their primary tools. These heroes are mentored by Batman. Okay. I'm just done with that. You want to head cat corner over here. You can see where it says hangar. Just look for the words. It's kind of like the uh, reactor core going here. It's the hangar. Access the terminal. The watchtower hangar holds some small portion of the watchtower fleet. Flash is usually here with information on various races rigged all over the world. And as you can see, like she said, over here in the middle, you can see Flash down there. You can talk to him if you want to. He just tells you about the, the hangar and says a few things. There's some more vendors units in here. Supplier units, which you'll access later on. They won't be available for you right now because it's too high a gear. Uh, okay, we're going to move on. Leave the uh, hangar. Now we're just going to return to the Meadow Wing. So what you want to do is, this is what I do, I just go right and head back down this corridor get you there. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but let's go continue back this way to the aquaculture area. Make a quick left to the cellar quarter out the other way. Pass that first terminal we got. Another left. Oops. Stuck in the wall. And that should complete the watchtower. So there you have it. The Justice League watchtower. You're now part of a mighty heroic tradition. Welcome. <clears throat> Make us proud. I'm and sure we'll be talking again soon. Oracle out. Yeah, most people are probably wondering, or you're probably wondering why I showed you the Watchtower in the first place. Most people are probably by now familiar with this part of the game. But you'd be surprised how many people don't access the Watchtower when they complete their, their last mission, which we did, which I believe was the Hive mission. After you complete that mission, you have access to the Watchtower, but some people forget to actually access the Welcome to the Watchtower in your journal. It's really easy to find it, and then you go to the Watchtower. And that's where you can obtain things like a vault ticket, R&D station stuff, which I'm about to do right now, and show you. And also you get access to your first base, which you can create. Most people don't forget, skip all this stuff, and later on they can't, they can't figure out how to do it. This is why I'm showing you this, so that you can access it right when you're doing the Hive mission. Remember, after the Hive mission, immediately select a Welcome to the Watchtower to give you access to here, and then you can get everything else I've talked about. Next, we're going to go ahead and select your journal. You'll see where it says Welcome to the Watchtower and complete it. You'll hear the next thing, which is speak with Mickey Cannon in the Meadow Wing, which is basically research and development. So as again, go back up to your inventory. You want to select the one that says research and development. Select it. 
You're doing a great job out there, but as your challenges get more difficult, you'll want to do some R&D to modify your equipment or even create some support items. The Lords of Order, Project Cadmus, and Magnus Robotics have stepped up to offer a hand. Why don't you go chat with Mickey Cannon in the Meta Wing? He's the director of Project Cadmus and can give you the lowdown on how to get an edge with research and development. As you can see, this is just past the Metal Wing area, past the mailboxes to the right of the R&D station. You'll see Mickey Cannon. You get to go ahead and talk to him. Hey, kid. Cannon's the name. Mickey Cannon. I'm the director of Project Cadmus, and I'm here to help all you meta folks get the hang of research and development. A little know-how about your gear and yourself can help turn the battle in your favor. Once you get yourself some plans and some components, you can use this R&D station to fix up lots of things. Here, take these items. They'll help you get going. I need to explain to you some more form what the R&D station is about. Before I explain, you go up to your journal again, push research development. It kind of gives you a bunch of starter things. Room of the random loot drop. Win amazing prizes. Hey, it's my good friend, that total stranger. I'm Ambush Buck. Here's your ball ticket. To use it, just complete the ambush bug quest in your communicator <coughs> and equip the ticket. Activate it and blammo! Into the vault! Thanks for playing. Okay, that's, that's ambush bug. You explain about the vault ticket, which you're going to do in a second. First, I want to go to your inventory. As you can see, Mickey can give you all these starter things like aggressive exobytes and a power alpha plan, R&D scanner. Like I said, you want to go ahead and collect all these right now at your leisure. Now, the R&D station is basically the thing to the right. As you can see a little terminal over there. To the uh, I believe Mickey Cannon's right, you'll see this terminal. As it turns blue, you push circle into it and you go into the R&D station. This is where you assemble, archive, and salvage. Also, recover different items to make different pieces of gear and mod your equipment, which I will basically talk to you in a video later on in the game once you're up to level 30, probably most likely. But that's the R&D station. It's going to be very useful for this particular game and for your character to mod your equipment and make yourself stronger as you go along. Very, very important. I can't stress how important it is. And then, um, let's see, let's go to the journal again. Access the green thing, it says Vault Ambush. It gives you a vault ticket. What you want to do is select that puppy in the menu here. After you select the vault ticket, let's go somewhere. I'm stand, that's where I usually go. Select R2 to scroll to it. You'll see the tickets are already in your inventory. It kind of went in place of the potion you had there. Push circle, and it brings it to the vault. See you there in a minute. <coughs> Said you have to destroy the presidents to get prizes for doing it. It's very useful if you want to get to random items or just certain things you can use in the game. There's also certain pieces of gear you can access that will help you with your CR later on. That's it! Game's over! Step along, step along, nothing to see! Get going before my good mood wears off! That means now! This Joker talking, of course. It's basically like this vault access thing you do. Every time you go in there, he's always talking. Okay, so as you can see, we did that. What you want to do after that is go back into your inventory and see what you got. There's a few things I got. I got the Galactic Guardians Leakings piece. You collect most of these things for styles. As you can see, there's little tiny pieces that are called uh, Extracted Ninth Metal and stuff. These are used for uh, artifacts, which is basically, to believe it or not, a new thing addition added to the game about a few months ago. With John Constantine artifacts can help you get stronger too. As you can see, there's new slots down here. If you're a beginner, this is the first time you'll be seeing it anyway, but if you've been in the game, you know these two slots are new. They're for your new artifacts, which is helpful for the game, makes you stronger. I'll explain that later on, probably when they're about level 20 or so, I'll explain it. It'll go through the mission anyway. Anyway, moving on, so we did that. Next, you want to push the rest of it to complete the vault ambush. I'll probably talk again, I think. I'm not sure. Let me push this here. 
and you go to the next one in your journal, which is home is where your base is. This is what people, most people just don't, just kind of fail to actually activate when they first come to the Watchtower, and then they kind of get lost as to why they don't have a base later on. This is the whole purpose why I'm doing this whole tutorial and video for people to see, so exactly what you do. You push this, they give you two base things, Deco and Gothic layers. I go into your inventory again. You want to collect those. Push X to collect it, and the other. Now that you have a theme for your base, you need to get a deed. These are used to actually grant base ownership and to select a location for the entrance. Like she said, go into your click your homestead. It will give you a deed. Once you see the deed, it says use the deed. Of course, you go into uh, your inventory, select the deed. It'll bring up a small screen, a base screen. This is where you'll select whether you want to be gothic, as you can see layer. You push left or right to select Deco layer or Gothic, the different kind. Then you want it, if you want it to be in Metropolis, is you just keep it like that and go down below where it says available entrances. You can purchase them, or if you want to go to Gotham, you switch over. Switch to Gotham, it's up to you which way you want to go. I usually just stay in Metropolis, of course, unless you're Gotham into like Batman or somebody. Anyway, go below where it says available entrances. Each one is a different part of the map in the world of Metropolis. Each one has a little bit of money, different cash. You probably want to pick something that's a little bit cheap, like 525. They're all kind of the same. Um, now keep in mind, this is not going to be accessible if you are a free or premium membership, I believe. You have to buy it over in the marketplace if you're not legendary. Legendary is about, it costs about $15, $16 a month, I believe. You can access it once a month and renew it once a month or however you want to buy. There's various packages. But unless you have legendary, you're not going to be able to access this particular thing. This is why people get upset about it. But it's just one of those things, you know, it comes with the, with the deal. So once you pick this one, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick the Franklin Street one, just, just to pick one. And enter it. You want to select right. it to enter the base. Head to your base now, and we'll take a little tour. And she asks if you want to enter your base. You could choose not to, but the best thing to do is probably to, to get it over with, so you can get your base set up, so you can use it later on. It's a very accessible and very valuable thing, part of the game. So we're going to go and enter it now. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, allergies. <coughs> nice little picture, of poison ivy. Okay, this is basically what the base looks like inside here. We're going to step forward, she's going to start telling you about it a little bit, then I'll come back. This is your mainframe, the nerve center of your lair. You can use it to gain access to powerful tools like orbital strikes, backup <coughs> reinforcements, and powerful equipment mods. Your mainframe's power is maintained here as well, so be sure to keep it up so you can have access to more powerful features. This is your dispenser, where you'll retrieve the items that you've selected in the mainframe, such as communicators for your backup and orbital strikes. Finally, this is your base's control panel. It's used to enter decoration mode, alter some of the colors of your base, and for other utility purposes. There you have it. There she explained the thing, this terminal here. If you access it, you can do a couple things, like enter decoration mode, you can really locate your base if you're not happy with it, which you probably don't want to do unless you really want a smaller base or something else. You can rename your base, which if I want to do that, you just push select. It'll bring up a little menu and say enter your name of your base. You push square. I'm just going to enter it and call it water base. Then you push OK. It'll accept it. Then it's name your base. If you want to go in again, you can actually uh, enter decoration mode. Before that, we should probably go into our inventory first and push home sweet home. She gives you a few items to put furniture or whatnot. And once you go over to those and, and collect them, then she kind of explains a little more here. Now that you've added the base items to your base inventory, <clears throat> use the control panel to enter decorator mode. Go back in, enter decorator mode like she suggested. You'll see a little, a little another camera While come on. While in decorator mode, you can place your items at the appropriate markers. While most base items are cosmetic, there are amenities you can acquire that have very specific functions like bank, mail, and broker access. However, amenities can only be placed at specific markers. Once you've filled up enough markers, you will unlock free placement mode and be able to place base items almost anywhere. So, that about wraps it up. I'm sure you'll uncover even more interesting things about your base. Good luck. And don't forget to try placing those items. Oracle out. Okay, so I'm to talking. Basically, like you said, she said there's little cursors here where you can place items. 
the left analog stick moves the camera around, the right analog stick moves the, moves the direction this way and this way for the cursor. You want to put a cursor over the blue part where you want to place your item. Press square, it brings up a smaller menu and shows you what you got. Right now it's a table you can put there. That's what gave us. You want to push X to select it. If that's where you want, there's various places you can put it. This is just where I'm going to put it right now. You press square to put it down. Or if you don't want to place it there, you can pick it up again. Pushing square, move it around. You can also remove it or cancel it if you want to put it at all. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Next, if you want to put something on the wall, there's various icons on the wall. And there's a clock she gave us. I'm going to put the clock right here. The pushing square. Again, she, I think she gave us a, some kind of a light. You push square again, it'll bring up the decoration hanging lamp. Just a few star items, but this whole place is pretty huge. I mean, uh, there's a big circumference of this whole base area. And like, but like I said, this is the this is for legendary people. This is how big most of them are when you're legendary. If you were free or, or premium, you'll have to probably get membership to get this actual base stuff and all these other things you want to get with it to get your upgrades. So it's always good to upgrade whenever, just letting you know. So if you, if you want to get back out of this room, you just put cancel triangle. That gets you back to where you were. Now you can see yourself. And let's see, the next thing we want to do, let's go into our thing. Okay, so now what you want to do is select your armory. There's your armory, gives you a free armory. You want to go into your map, your inventory, select the armory. Now that you have the armory, you go back into decorator mode, enter decoration, find a big spot on the floor, pick your biggest spot like this one right here. You show the armory, access it, place the armory over here. Press square to put it down. Triangle to cancel back out. This is basically saving your builds. And builds is going to be something you do for different various characters. Like, for instance, I have, uh, like, spin the rolls to your last video, uh, DPS or whatever role you have. Saving this to this build here can, can, can get you so you can make different builds. And if you want to, you can make an, various builds up to six, I believe. I think it's more now. They made updates. So you just select here, circle, and print. You want to imprint at one time. There you go. That shows your imprint. That's what you want to print. And print again. X. There you go. You'll see yourself saved on there. You can always go in there and change different things you want to do. Like for instance, if you go in here like this, you can go to activate, rename, change icon. You can change on anything you want like that. Uh, go back. You can rename it so you can re you can name your actual build. I'm just gonna put uh, water, or I should put DPS. That's what I am. You can put various names in here. Just gonna put that. You press OK. You'll select it. Go back and print it. There you have it. And then to activate the build, you want to hold down L2 and R2. It'll bring up a smaller tab. You push up on the control pad, and it'll switch the build. But since I just have the one, it's not going to do anything really because it's the same. It's the same thing. A successful build to change is to change the the way it looks on this thing. And then once you save it, you can go to that particular build anytime you want. But uh, it's better to have more than one. And then we're going to go to the next thing in the map, which shows to lock and load. So what you want to do is you want to go to the generator. I believe it's underneath the bottom floor. Here's the generator. You want to select it. You want to go up to the fist where I put my icon I changed. Push uh, select it. It'll go to DPS, water base. And that's pretty much it. You exit out. This has various things too, like power level, which you can put power cells in to keep it going, which I'll explain later on. The mods you can put in there. That's all for stuff later on. Back out of this, and it's complete. The next mission we're going to be doing, once I come my next video, is going to be about the World of Tomorrow, which actually is, is best in more than the Cersei mission. So I'll come back on, and I guess I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. When I come back on, we will have access to going back at your next mission. So I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.